service on tonight. Our scripture reading will be coming from Psalms 24, and it reads, The earth is the Lord and all of its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hills of the Lord, or who, sh who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessings from the Lord, and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek his face. Number seven says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, lift up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. I have read Psalms 24 in its entirety. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. This evening, Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come before you, Lord, we just want to say thank you. We give you thanks, Lord God, for all that you're doing, Lord God, in this place. We thank you, Lord God, for those, Lord God, who you are sending this way, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you continue, Lord God, to lead us and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Father God, touch our hearts and our minds, Lord God. Give us peace, Lord God, in the midst of this turmoil, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us safe, Lord God, in the midst of this pandemic. Lord God, we ask, Lord God, that you help us, Lord God, to lean, trust, and depend on you. Father God, we know that all of our help comes from the Lord. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you bless the word on tonight. Bless this servant on, on tonight, Lord God. Let your Holy Spirit reign in this place. Father God, we give you praise, Lord God, for all that you do, Lord. We ask, Lord God, that you bless our pastor as he's on his way. Lord God, anoint the singers that will be singing on tonight, Lord God. Father God, we're asking, Lord God, to give us a word on tonight. Father God, be with those, Lord God, who are going through, Lord God, depression, Lord God, who may be fighting on a job, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you go before us, Lord God. For you said no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that there is nothing, Lord God, on this earth that can separate us from your love. We give you praise, Lord God, and we give you honor because you're worthy to be praised. Bless those, Lord God, who have lost loved ones, Lord God, as we go into the reason for the season, Lord God. We lift you up and we magnify you, Lord God, because you're worthy to be praised. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We want to continue in prayer. Hallelujah. Because God is so mighty. He is so wonderful. Hallelujah. So we just take this time all just to acknowledge him. We take this time to lift his name up because he's so worthy and there's no one like him. So Father God, we invite your presence in even the more, Father. So God, we ask that we decrease, oh God, that you increase in and through us in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord God, I ask that you look in on everyone that come in the house on this evening, Father. I ask you to touch everyone that may log in online this evening, Father, because you know what everyone stands in the need of, oh God. So Lord God, I'm asking you, oh God, to meet every need, oh God, to touch every heart, oh God, to strengthen like only you can in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, we praise you, God. We adore you, oh God, for being good. We adore you for being faithful. We adore you for being mighty. We adore you for being a strong tower of present help in the time of need. That's who you are. And Lord God, we thank you and we praise your name. Lord God, continue to look in on the service of God. That we just not come in to, to see what's going on or see who said what, oh God. But that we may come in with our mind ready to receive a word from you, God. Someone needs you for one thing. Yeah. 
And what denying yourself simply means is that it's not what I want, not I, but it's the Christ that lives inside. Here's what Jesus said, if you all remember this. Jesus said this simply, nevertheless, not I, my will, but your will be done. So what he was simply saying is that there is something that I want to do, but I know that what you call to do. So fasting is one of those things. So here's a review. We talked about preparation. We talked about why your family. All right, raise your hand if you remember this from last week. Why your family should be fasting together. We talked about that. We gave you some tools to use about your family having to fast. Listen to me, saints. This is going to cause some issues in the house because somebody going to want to eat steak. Somebody going to want some chicken. Y'all talk back to me. So it's going to cause some schism. Here's what Jesus said. Don't think I came to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. Now that don't sound right because he's the prince of peace. What he meant was I don't come to bring human peace. I don't come to bring peace how you determine it. I come to put father against son and mother against daughter. What was he really saying? That based on who I am and based on what people's belief about me is, it's going to cause some schisms. So when we talk about fasting, which is a spiritual thing, there's going to be somebody in your household who does not want to do this. But it's so important that everybody get on the same playing field and everybody go in the same way. Why? Because somebody, everybody had to cross the Red Sea and the Jordan River at the same point. You could have some people down here. You could have some people over here. No, everybody had to go this way. Why? That's the way God provided. It was the only place in the Red Sea that was dry land. So no matter what you think, no matter if you saw a boat, you had to walk through the Red Sea the same way. It's the same way with fasting. The church, we have to be together. Why? Because that's the place of grace. Can I tell you all this? That when you get in line with what God is doing, there's a level of grace that helps you get through it. Like if you're on your own, yes, you can have God's grace, but there's so much grace when everybody's on one accord. Prove it, Bible, Pastor. Well, when they were in the upper room, the Bible says they were all in one accord, in one place. What happened? The promise came. The Holy Ghost became fell, and they began to speak in other tongues, and the men of that region heard their language being spoken. Why? Because they were all in, look at me, one place with one mind, and they were all on one accord. There's not two churches in New Bethlehem. We are one body. We are one body. We are part of a larger organization called the Body of Christ. But we are a local assembly of believers going the same way. Somebody scream the same way. All right. Now, the last two that I'm going to give you, Joshua chapter 3. Write these down. These are from Latin, the last couple of weeks. Joshua 3 through uh, chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, and number 13. I want you to realize the difference when you read those number 13 is the first time that they wanted to conquer the promised land. If you remember, Caleb and Joshua come back and they steal the people. But if you remember what we did, the juxtaposition was this, is that in Numbers 3, Joshua said, sanctify yourself. That word sanctify, we equate with you need to fast and you need to pray. Sanctification, look at Pastor, look online. Sanctification is not a denomination. Preach. You go to a sanctified church. And we're not just sanctified because we speak in tongues and we dance and we prophesy. Sanctification has everything to do with faith in Jesus Christ. Because if you're in him, you now are set apart from the world. That is the etymological root of sanctification. That you have been set apart by God through Jesus. So sanctification has nothing to do with spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts should follow sanctification, but they are not a prerequisite to be sanctified. The prerequisite for being a sanctified church, here it is, New Bethel, we have faith in Jesus. Because we have faith in Jesus, our heart is open to spiritual gifts, tongues, prophecy, gifts of knowledge, gifts of healing. We are open to those. Apart from our denomination, we are a Bible church, and we believe in gifts. Why? Because they're in the Bible. Somebody say amen today. All right, so when Joshua says, sanctify yourself, he's saying fast. He's saying pray. He's saying, that's just the air, y'all. He's saying don't act like the world. That's what sanctification is. You can wear dresses. You can wear suits. You can uh, have the title pastor. But if you're not following Jesus, you are not sanctified. You can go to every convocation. You can go to every ordination. But if you're not following Jesus, 
That is not sanctification. Sanctification is seen by your lifestyle. Okay, so Joshua says, sanctify yourself. He said, for tomorrow, we're going to do, God's going to do wonders in your sight. That's what he said. In Numbers 13, Moses was the only one fasting. And so you saw the difference. In Numbers 13, they didn't possess the land. And they wandered for 40 years because nobody was praying and fasting except the leader. Joshua 3, everybody's fasting and praying. And not only do they cross the Jordan, they possess Jericho. Now, which one you want? You want Numbers 13 or you want Jer or Joshua 3? Okay, I don't know about your answer for the, for the class. I'm speaking for everybody. I want Joshua 3. I want to possess Jericho. And they still had to go spy Jericho out like they did in Numbers 13. But what was the difference? When they met Ray Rachel, Rahab, Rachel, I pronounce it, Rahab had a good report. And regardless of what she said, they knew that God had given them Jericho because why? They were sanctified for it. They were prepared. They were set apart from the world. And they had their mind. That's what fasting is. What it's saying is, Lord, okay, typically every morning, I get up, I got, have my coffee, I have my eggs, and I sit down and watch the news, and I got my daily bread. That's your day, right? Well, we're saying for sanctification, all that changes. So now, I don't want to get my coffee. And I don't wear the t-shirt that says, don't talk to me unless I've had coffee. Well, I don't wear that t-shirt. Because coffee doesn't get me motivated, Jesus does. So what we're saying in 2022, that my day it's going to start with God, and my day is going to end with God. Watch this. And my day is going to be full of God. So typically when I get mad at my coworkers, I got to go watch some YouTube and bring myself down. No, now you're going to go to your car and you're going to pray. Because the earthly things are not what we're going for. We are trying to be set apart so Joshua 3, he can do wonders in our sight. What does wonders look like? It looks like that when people come in here sick, wonders look like because we've been with God, we can lay hands on the sick, Mark 16, and they shall recover. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching ahead of myself. Okay, now do something real quick. All right, let's go to Acts 13. Acts 13. Acts 13. Y'all going to have to get off my nose. Acts 13. Acts 13. Okay, let's start here. Now, the book of Acts is the second of the installment of the book of Luke. Luke is, from all theologians, from every church history perspective, there is nobody who would refute that Luke wrote the gospel of Luke and that he wrote Acts. Primarily, watch this, is that Luke is only mentioned about four times outside of this gospel, and a man that's not mentioned a lot, nobody's going to really plagiarize a book in his name because he's not that well known. So there's no other uh, idea that nobody else wrote these books except Luke. Luke is a companion of Paul. So the question is always, how did Luke get his information? He got his information because he was with Paul, and he also interviewed some of the early uh, leaders of the church. He interviewed Peter. That's why he gets information from Peter. You also find, I think it's in uh, Acts 14, Luke uses these type of terms. And we went. So he also not only was a companion, not only did he interview, but he was also involved with some of the things that the early church was going through. So, so Luke has a front row seat to what God is doing. Pastor, why is that all important? Because Luke has the credibility to write a book that we need to live by. So that's why Acts 13 is so important. But I want you to see something that happens in Acts 13. New Bethel, every member of this church, if we do this, watch this, we'll lay hold to the same anointing that was in the early church. And the same anointing that was in the early church, nobody had a want. Everybody's needs were met. Bodies were healed. Souls were being saved. That's seemed to work. See, we worry about what you give the kids for Christmas, and half of them don't even know who Jesus is. They don't know, they don't know what it means to be born again. I mean, we we, we got to keep this, we got to keep the kingdom at the forefront. It's about the kingdom. I mean, we get nice things and new stuff, and all that, but the kingdom, it's not, it has nothing, we are not, this church over here that, well, you got to do certain things to get involved. No, just believe in Jesus. If you believe in the Lord Jesus and you're willing to sit underneath this word, I guarantee you won't be the same. Yes. 
The word will change you. It will convince you. I love what the late mother shit would say. Either it's going to drive you or it's going to draw you. I want it to draw me. So Luke's gospel, the purpose of this. So, so let me give you a little tidbit. This is free. Acts and Hebrews is a good book to read together. They're hard books to read in terms of that you got to really know you're studying these books for a reason. Because Hebrews uh, chronicles the old covenant to the new covenant. And it focuses on Jesus. Hebrews does the book of Hebrews. Acts details the older church going into this newer church because of Jesus. So in other words, Acts picks up where Luke, Mark, Matthew, and John leave off. It, see, it picks up. Jesus has risen from the grave. Watch this. And now he's on the Mount of Olives where he was just praying three days earlier. Watch this. Well, actually 40 days because the Bible says when he rose from the dead, he spoke 40 days concerning things about the kingdom. So let me get my math right in case somebody's online. Here it is. 40 days after his resurrection, he's on the Mount of Olives getting ready to ascend to heaven. So Hebrews is good to read because you understand the covenant of God, but Acts is good to read because you see what Jesus is doing after he raises from the dead. That's why there is a schism between Baptists and Pentecostals. Because see, Baptists, we love the cross. That's all we talk about where most Pentecostals, you never hear their preachers going by Calvary's Hill. They start at the upper room because everything to, for them starts after the baptism falls. But here's what I want you to understand. You got to have Calvary, but you can't have the upper room until you leave Calvary. But you can't stay at Calvary because he didn't stay there. You got to go to the upper room. So who's right? Neither. The Bible's right. Somebody's wrong. So we got to leave Calvary and we got to get to the upper room because the Holy Ghost got to fall because if the Holy Ghost don't fall, we won't get no spiritual gifts. But you just can't say the upper room and forget about Calvary because you can't have no spiritual gifts unless you get saved. And the only way you get saved is by Calvary. Y'all ain't talking to me. So there's no way for you to ta 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 ro 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 unless you get saved first. That's it. And the only way you get saved is by Calvary. So you got to have them both. Talk to me, say it. So we needed Luke to write Acts because Luke talks about Calvary, but then he takes us to the upper room and gets us the Holy Ghost. Preacher, man. Okay? Y'all still here? If you're not here, say, Pastor, you lost me. Uh, 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 amen. All right. <laughs> Acts 13. Look at this. Everybody got the Bible? All right, this is for your family. This is for you. This is for everybody in your household. All right? Let me prove one more point to you. Write this down, Colossians 4.14. Colossians lets you know, and it validates my point, that Luke was a companion of Paul. Read Colossians 4.14. All right? Now, okay, uh, Acts 13, verse 1. Now, there were in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers. All right, who were there? Prophets and who? So, so the Bible does speak of prophets after Elijah. So Elijah is not the last prophet because the Bible speaks of prophets in this early church. Okay? Now that's important for later on. All right, here are the prophets and the teachers. Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manan which had been brought up with Herod, the treacherer, and, and guess who else is there, y'all? Saul, all right, who was also called Paul to the Greeks. There's no scripture that says his name was changed. I'm not going to get into that, but I want to just emphasize that he is Saul here. As they, look at verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord, that means they were serving the Lord, they were at church, they were in a fellowship, as they ministered to the Lord, and did what, y'all? Fasted. Fasted. The Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they did what? So the Holy Ghost was always talking, but they were only able to hear what the Holy Ghost was saying when they were separate, sanctified. Sanctified, write it down, means to be set apart, to be separated. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until then 
that they can really hear the Holy Ghost talking about what happened. See, a lot of times we get vision and we get ideas from seeing other people. For instance, I wanted to be a, uh, uh, um, I wanted to uh, be a uh, detective. You know why? Because I used to watch Night Rider. So I wanted to get a car like Night Rider, and I wanted him to name, name to be Kid, and I wanted him to talk. But then when I found out that could happen, I wanted to go to the NBA. You know why? Because I watched Magic Johnson. So based on something that I saw, watch this, it, it, it made me want, and children do all the time, want to be a doctor, want to be a lawyer, right? Then I knew I could be a doctor when I saw Cliff Upton, right? And then I knew I could have a good, you know, so I saw these things. Now watch this. But what did the Holy Ghost want from me? But so my mother taught us how to fast at a young age, and she'll tell the testimony to where we I'll be home in the summertime and I say, Mom, I call my mom. She said, What you doing? I'm fasting until noon. Well, I didn't know that I was shouldn't have told her telling her that because Bible said you tell them, you know, that you get your reward. But I was just letting her know that I was fasting that and so I would be fasting until noon, and then noon was over, I'd be eating all the food up, right? Because I had eight all morning. Y'all ain't talking to me. But I also didn't know as a kid that you couldn't watch cartoons while you was fasting. So here I am fasting. Then you get up out of here. Jesus. <laughs> all right? And that, Brother El, Minister Cornell, you, your friend, back to me, get, get a hold of him when you get done with you get a phone. Wow. All right? He's going to say, Kevin, Charlie God, and praise God. Now, so I didn't know that. But the thing was, my heart was in the right place. And so I was trying to fast. And now, here's the problem I'm trying to get you to see, y'all, that when you're fasting, God begins to speak, and he begins to give you direction for your life. See, I wanted to be a detective, I wanted to be a doctor, all good profession, I wanted to go to the NBA, all good stuff, but what did God say? And it wasn't until, well, this is what we see, y'all, it wasn't until these men all got together and they turned the plate over. So that means even while you're fasting, certain things that you participate in, they are no longer. I tell you, I tell you this all the time, y'all, and, and every, every year I miss the college football uh, playoff. I miss it every year. You know why? Because we are in our 21-day fast. And even when people are talking about it, I'm making, this is Pastor, I'm making my duty to go the other way. For two reasons. I don't want to know the score, but also I'm trying to stay focused. Because I need to hear from God. Now, what, what Barnabas, look at the scriptures, y'all. What Barnabas and, 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 and uh, Saul are getting ready to do, they can't do because they've seen other people do it. They got to do it because this is what God wants them to do. And so you just can't start a business because everybody else started one and everybody else getting PPP. You can't just start a church because you feel the call to do that. No, you got to do it because this is what the Holy Ghost is saying and how the Holy Ghost talks and how you listen. Fasting, praying. Look what happens. Look, look at verse number three. He says, and when, uh, he says, and as they minister to the Lord, that means they were worship. Underline the word or circle the word minister to the Lord. There is a ministry that we give God apart from your serving in the local church. So apart from you singing, apart from you being a deacon, a deaconess, a minister, whatever your role is, a musician, minister, ministry to the Lord looks like worship outside of a scheduled worship setting. So when you're ministering to God, you're serving him. You're serving his people. You're walking in love. You're walking in forgiveness. You're not walking in strife and walking in offense. You're serving your family. If you're a wife, you're serving your husband. If you're a husband, you're serving your family. You're loving them. You're covering them. That's ministry to God. And so what he's saying to you is that you're doing this, look at this, with a pure heart. And so he's saying, as they were doing that, on top of that, they were turning over the plate. And then the Holy Ghost said, okay, I got something for y'all to do. I got something for you to do so you can further the kingdom. All right? And he said, separate to me. Look at verse 4. So they, so they, being sent, not went, them being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed into Seleucia, and from this they sailed to Cyprus. He says, from this encounter with God, ministry began to take place. Now watch this, y'all. Chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, chapter 17, all are talking about chapter 18. They're all birthed out of these first four verses. Go back and read them. You see Paul in Ephesus. You see Paul in Corinth. You see Paul in a place called Berea. 
You see Paul in Thessalonica. How? He wasn't doing this before chapter 13. In chapter, just chapter 9, he got saved. Chapter 10 focuses on Peter and Cornelius. Chapter 11 and 12 is talking about the early church. And then it wasn't until chapter 13, verses 1 through 4, they're fasting and praying. All of this other stuff begins to happen. Can I tell you what's on the other side of you fasting and praying? Miracles. Open doors. Things that you've never seen before. Because think about this, saints. In chapters 1 through 8, what was Saul doing? What was he doing in Acts chapter 1 through 8? Give me a word. Persecuting the church. He was killing the church. Chapter 9, he has an encounter with God. Remember this? On the road called Damascus Road. And then he says, go to the place called Straight. And Ananias lays his hand on it. Well, guess what happened? If Paul and them never fast and pray, we don't get what we're getting ready to read here in a second. In other words, where you are right now is cool, praise God, but where God wants to take you is even better. But there is a journey through pain called fasting and praying. But guess what? Temporary pain will give you so much success on the other side when you do it in God. Uh, when, when I was growing up, they had a song during offering time. And we probably didn't know, but we just sang it. That's what we knew. You can't be God given. No matter how you try. Because the more you give, the more he'll give back to you. In other words, if you're doing this in God, for God, I don't know what's on the other side of this pain. But I know it's going to be so good. I just know that when you walk by people, we read in the scriptures, people's shadow is getting healed. I mean, and, and, and they were getting healed by the shadow of Peter. And the, I mean, uh, 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 things were being taken from them, and they were being healed. I don't know what God's going to do for your children, for you, for your marriage, for your grown children. I don't know what's going to happen, but guess what? I know it's going to be good. Can I, give you, can I give you insight? Nothing that the devil will ever do for you will be good. But everything that God will do for you will always be great. Devil can't bless you. He doesn't want to bless you. Even his, even his uh, blessings are really curses, even though they may be dressed up as a curse. I mean, dressed up as a blessing. Think about this, you all. Uh, I, I can't cook that good, right? Uh, Y'all probably know this already. But if I put barbecue sauce on it, I may get an amen. <laughs> Why? Because barbecue sauce covers up a lot of things. I cook Cajun. I, my food's normally Cajun. All right? Extra Cajun. Y'all ain't talking to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm talking about. But you put a little barbecue sauce on it, you know, somebody may chew on that for a little bit. Why? Because I can I can mask the Cajun up with the barbecue. Well, that's what Satan does. Underneath that barbecue, in there was some charred chicken. Y'all ain't talking to me. And if you really saw what was underneath the barbecue sauce, you wouldn't eat it. But the only way that you can see what he's doing is that you got to be aligned with God. Well, Pastor, I really don't need to fast. I mean, I got good money. Things are going on for me. I'm able to do this. And shoot, I mean, I'm good. But what about the spiritual battles that you are unaware of that are getting ready to come to your family and you're not ready? And the moment they hit your door, they're, oh, God, where are you at? I've been the same place I've been trying to get you to. Oh, uh, Mike Tyson said, everybody got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah, it's easy to have a plan until, until that guy on the end and a sparring partner. Mm -hmm. It's a real fight now. In other words, I don't know what's coming, but when you are in tune with God through fasting and praying, you can take the punch. You can stand, therefore, having your moments girl about the truth. The problem is that we're spending more time eating than we are uh, eating them with God. Can I show you what happens in chapter 15 real quickly? Go to chapter 15, verse 36 through 41. Y'all get anything out of this? All right. Then I'm going to give you a point here. Look at, look, at, look at Acts chapter 15, verse 36 to 41. And consequently, you all, I'm going to be doing a series on the book of Acts and Revelation in the new year, so get ready for that. All right, look at, look at Acts 15, verse 36 to 41. When you're in 36, say, I'm there. If you're not there, say, hold up. All right, and some days later, now, now this is, they have traveled, they're doing ministry. This is after Acts 13. Watch this, look at verse 15. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and seen how they do it. Good, right? Let's go back. Let's revisit where we've done ministry. Look at verse 37. 
And Barnabas determined to take with him John, John, whose surname was Mark. We know that John Mark is the nephew of Barnabas. Okay? So he said, let me go get my nephew. He's going to roll with us. Look at verse 38. But Paul thought not good to take him with them because who had departed from them from uh, Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. In other words, Paul said, he left us before. I don't really want to take him again. All right, look at verse 39. And, content, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. Stop. Wait a minute. I want to bring my nephew. You don't want to bring my nephew. So because I'm right, you wrong, however that goes, we're going to leave each other. We've done all of this ministry together. But because I ain't getting my way and you ain't getting your way, I'm going to take my mom I'm going to another church. That's what's really what's happening. Or I'm so offended, I'm not going to serve in ministry. Because I don't like what you're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm this, I go, and the Lord told me, until I got until the Lord said, tell, tell me something, I ain't going to leave. But your pastor, who is speaking for the Lord, is telling you certain things and you ain't listening. It got quiet right there, because you know why? We don't understand that. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Look at this. Watch this. He says, he says in verse, oh, we're in verse 39, he says, uh, and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. He did his own thing. This is the last we hear of Barnabas, by the way. And Paul chose Silas and departing and, and being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Sicilia, confirming the church. Stop. I mean, make a point. You would say that Paul and Silas did good. You know, they were in Philippi. The, the, at night they prayed and all this good stuff. And so, you know, even though you didn't do, I didn't do it the way you wanted me, it still turned out good. Here's my point. Go back to verse 39. And the contention was so sharp. Why did nobody stop and pray and say, we need to fast about this? Uh-oh, it got quiet in the church. Because no, I want my way. I'm right. And Barnabas probably said, I'm the one who brought you in this thing. How you going to tell me, Saul, that you don't want to bring my nephew, and I'm the one who confirmed you in ministry? Nobody. You see what happened? Nobody's praying. Nobody's fasting. Everybody wants their way. And so because man doesn't get their way, we do what man does, and that's opposite of God every time. Yes, we can always say hindsight is 2020. Yeah, it was the Lord's will that they separate. Cool. But what about them in that moment? They didn't know what we we're going to be reading right now. But they separated. But what if they would have done what happened in chapter 13, verses 1 through 4? How many divorces could be stopped? If the husband would say, we need to fast, or the wife would say, we need to pray. How, how, many, how many children, how many children, how many people would not go to jail if somebody say, we need to fast? No, we're too busy running around talking about so many variants and so many checks, but we're not talking about the Lord. And then when a preacher stands up and say what I just said, you get offended. And you're more offended at, what's, at what CNN is showing you. How is it that they got all these numbers? I don't know where they get these numbers from and how they keep track of all these people. But, but the problem is when preachers stand up and preach faith and have you believe God, now somehow we are going against the, the, the status quo. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're asking you to trust God in the midst of a perverse generation that doesn't trust God. I'm not asking you to be reckless. I'm not asking you to be silly. Remember, I already preached a sermon about that. What is reckless faith? What is biblical faith? So you've been taught that. But what I'm saying is, where is the focus and the sanctification with God? Y'all getting it? Okay. All right, look here now. Write this down. Fasting is all about direction from God to build the kingdom. That's all fasting is. It's, it's you getting direction from God. To build the kingdom. Don't you know, listen to pastor, and I'll argue, I'll debate it till the, 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 the cows come on. Marriage has nothing to do with happiness. It has everything to do with the kingdom. You are a representation of the kingdom. You are a representation of God and his bride, the church. So God takes care of his bride. His bride is called to obey he, he, uh, they're priests, and that priest leads that bride to righteousness. Now, guess what? He ain't always happy with us. 
You know how I know this? It's because he got angry with Israel and led them to captivity. But while they were in captivity, he wrote a, he wrote a, a story for us, said, I'm married to the backslider. He didn't abandon Israel. He just put them in captivity because they thought fat meat wasn't greasy. Y'all ain't talking to me. Here's the point. Your life, fasting, marriage, how you raising your children, it ain't really about college degrees and you going to dinner talking about, well, you know, my daughter goes to uh, Spelman and my son goes to uh, Morehouse. No, it ain't even about that. Are they living for the Lord? Are our families, this church, is all a representation. I hope they go to Howard. I hope they go to Morehouse. I'm the pastor not saying any of that. What I'm saying is, though, the fundamentals, the foundation, is everything that we're doing is, a, is to represent the kingdom of God. That's all it's about. And about you getting a new job, you getting a new car. New, it's, everything's about the kingdom. And when you have that perspective, life becomes a little bit easier. So now you ain't got to keep up with the Joneses, per se. And Deacon Jones loves when I say that, too, Right? Because he knows what I'm mean. You don't have to keep up with them. You don't have to, like, chase after anything because you know everything you're doing. Okay, Lord, how is this building your kingdom? How is this teaching a kingdom principle? How is this teaching people to love you more? Because if it ain't bringing him glory, is it self-centered? Well, if it's self-centered, it probably is not God. And if it's not God, the flesh profited some things. The Bible says nothing. So this is how you kill your flesh. You fast. You tell that flesh, no, nope, this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray. It's 530. Well, that's what time I'm going to get up. This is what time we're getting up. Oh, don't that cheeseburger smell good? No, I'm good right now. Hold up that. I'm gonna, we're going to read some of it. We're going to read what Pastor said. We're going to read Hebrews and Acts together. Oh, Lord, we're going to read again. Yes. Because I ain't read the Bible in a while. So you've been looking at it, but I need to be reading it. And now that thing getting on the inside of you. And now, when I'm saying things in Bible study or on Sunday, it's clicking with you because you've been spending time with it. Mm -hmm. See, if I asked you, give me three characters on power, you probably could tell. Some poor people could. Or if I told you, if you asked me three players in the NBA, I'd take three real quick. Why? Because I spend time in the NBA. You get what I'm saying to you? But watch this. I don't want to have that more knowledge than I have of his promises. This is what I want to know. You so deep, you always got a scripture. Good. Because if I want to say, I always have a cuss word. You ain't talking. Now that my mind's been renewed. Come on. All right, so, so why did they have the schism? Because they weren't praying and fasting. Look at this. Fasting is all about direction from God. You're getting direction from God. Okay, Lord, how do we build the kingdom? Looking back to Acts 13 in your mind, why did he separate them? So that they could build the kingdom. They wanted to build the kingdom. And we cannot evangelize. I got some vision for us in, uh, in uh, uh, 2022. The Lord delay is coming. We got some things that are going on. And it's going to be intentional evangelism. It's going to be intentional. Not door to door. I'm talking about intentional evangelism to where we're going to be just sharing the gospel. And, and yes, you're going, to, you're going to attract people who want to argue with you. Here's how you stop an argument. Well, what do you believe? Okay, tell me why you believe. Okay, you say this. I don't have no problem with arguing with you, but for this moment right here, what we're offering people is Jesus. And this is why we're offering Jesus. Do you want him? No, but I want to talk about this. Uh-uh. Here it is. We're offering people Jesus. Do you want this Jesus? And this is why we're offering him. We can argue later. Won't you come to Wednesday night and we can have this conversation? But right now, you're not going to be a distraction. See, people who want to argue with you about the faith, they're trying to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Posture. They want, they, want you, they want you to know that they know more than you. And, and you can't be distracted when you're evangelizing. It happens to me all the time in the barbershop. Yes, I go to the barbershop. It happens to me in the barbershop all the time. Right? People uh, want to argue and so what they do is they jump the conversation. So they give you a, ask you a question about Jesus. So as you're explaining that, they bring something else up. And so what I do is, over my years of being an apologist, I say to people, no, no, no. We're going to deal with this subject first. And when I'm done with this one, then we'll jump. So when we're doing intentional evangelism in 2022 sites, we're going to just evangelize. I don't, I don't need you to be an expert. I don't need you to know every scripture that your pastor knows. But I, what I want you to know is I want you to have a heart to see people say it. And we've missed that. 
we're saved, our family's doing good, and I know for some of us, it took us a lot to get there. But let Pastor in, let you in on the secret. There's still more work after that. Okay, I can take a deep breath. I finally got my family together. Okay, cool. That's your reasonable service. Now it's time to continue to build the kingdom. But if you cast all your cares on God, he'll strengthen your family and then give you the anointing to help somebody else. Well, Pastor, I'm not called to evangelism. Let Pastor help you with love. Yes, you are. Everybody in here has been tasked, children included, have been tasked to share the gospel. It is our duty to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I've got to teach you how to do that, but we got to do it, okay? Write this down. Pastoral nugget. I don't want anything catastrophic to happen to make us fast. I don't want us to be fasting because we're under duress. It's kind of like you're working, you're trying to work on your uh, body after they diagnose you. It's cool, you can get it, but I want us to be proactive. Like I don't want us to wait for something, okay, your saints, we gotta fast. No, no, we're gonna be fasting now. So we can hear from God so he can prepare us. Fasting does not eliminate trials, but it does prepare you to get through them. So I don't want anything catastrophic to happen to make us fast. So let's go ahead and do this, Lord. We're going to surrender early. We're going to just surrender on GP. And then through our surrendering, we know that you're going to just open the windows of heaven. You're going to give us anointing. You're going to give us revelation. You're going to get our heart right. Does that make sense? Because if we, if we wait and become what I call radioactive, now we're on the defense as opposed to being offensive. Okay? What, what I mean by that is that, okay, I want to go into this thing hearing from God because I don't know what's going to, Don't you know that 2022 is not going to be like, you know, 2021 in terms of that? Think about this. That the, the new year really don't really get started until like February. You know what I'm saying? Because January still kind of looked like December a little bit. And you don't start seeing a lot of change until like February, even into the middle of the year. And before you know it, if you blink, it's going to be Christmas again. And you're going to be in the same place that you're in this year. Trying to get your summer body together. Trying to walk in more love. Trying to get it. Trying to get We're always trying. Let's just start doing some stuff. Let's step out on faith. Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. All right, here's, here's the Lord talking to you. Come. No, no, you're yeah, right, right. No, I'm good, Lord. No. But fasting will give you that ear and that prayer. And you're like, babe, I think we need to try this. Oh, we need to try that. And God will start giving you ideas. He'll start giving you things. You're like, I didn't even think about that. And then you'll come to church and you'll hear a sermon and that thing, or you'll hear a song and that thing will connect with you. And then before you know it, you're walking on the water and you don't even realize it. And now it's too late because you're out in the middle. You're like, well, I guess I got to continue to believe God. And now you're like, wait a minute. Why am I doing this? And here's what the devil will try to get you to do. He'll, he'll make some of you talk you out of your talk, talk yourself out of a blessing. I don't deserve this. How am I doing this? It ain't you. You know, I tell myself all the time, I say, man, people say, you preach real God. I'm like, I don't know what y'all heard. Because in my mind, it was terrible. But guess what? I know it ain't. It's God. It's God. So I know I'm walking on water. I'm walking on water because I spent time with it. Are you with me? Look at this now. All right. Write this down. I'm not going to go to this one. I want you to write down. I said it last week. Proverbs chapter 6. Uh, uh, verses 6 to 11. Here are some benefits of fasting. Here's some benefits. Now this is for the people who are humble enough that want it, they want this because if you know it all, you know, praise God, the pastor can't help you, but for those who are hungry for his word, here it is for you. Here are some benefits of fasting. Number one, the voice of God becomes more clear. You will know God's voice when you are focused on it. When you are intentionally trying to hear God, he becomes and can I tell you something? He always speaks, he always references this. So for instance, I'll give you a prime example. Um, I was faced with a situation here and uh, somebody had an idea uh, for the church, uh, somebody I trust, and uh, but it went against what I wanted to do. So I said, well, Lord, I said, I said, I told the individual, I said, let me pray about it and let me see what God says. I really, I said, let me, let me, speak, let me speak to the Lord about it. And so the Lord gave me some scriptures and I said, Lord, I really want a witness. I need a witness. 
So I called a, a, a close friend and uh, I, I gave him the scenario and then he gave me the same scripture that the Lord had gave me. Not knowing, but he, only, he, he knows the only language that I speak is scripture. So he gave me a scripture. I said, okay, I said, okay, that's my witness. That's what I need. The Lord said, cool. All right. I, and I called the individual back. I said, A, B, and C, let's get it done. Da, 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 da. And I felt at peace. Why? Because I sought God. Right, right. I sought his word. I fasted because I said, Lord, I want to hear from you. I turned that plate over and I got into his word. And God spoke to me through his word. But I said, Lord, if I didn't feel confident, give me a witness. Let somebody confirm that. And guess what? I called somebody, and my confirmation, it comes up and it comes up. I said, Lord, give me confirmation. That person gave me confirmation. I was good with it. Now, here's the problem. I gave the person the scenario, but here's the thing. I didn't hold anything back. See, sometimes we're looking for confirmation, and we don't give people the full story. Because we're looking for the answer we want, not the answer the Holy Ghost wants to give. What do you mean by that? Let me give you the Bible. Go back to Acts 13. Because I know how men are. I know how humans are. I know how really how men are because I'm a man. Let me show you. Look at verse, verse 1. Now, there was in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. That's plural. Right? There's a lot of prophets there. And a lot of okay, this is a freshman English class. S on the end means plural. That means more than one. All right? Am I right, Miss Teacher back there? Right. Amen. Praise God. All right. Teachers and prophets. Here are some of them that were there. Barnabas, Simeon, that was called Niger, Lucius, um, Maniah, and, uh, and was here and all, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul. Stop. Lord, they ain't the only ones here. Y'all missed it. Holy Ghost said, only give me two, but there was plenty there. See how we missed that? What if somebody would have been like, well, why you ain't calling me? I've been here just as long as he just got saved. Come on. He just, he just got here. What is he doing? She just got here. She just, she just came, she just got off the weed. What you got doing? Use her pastor. See, sometimes we look for confirmation in what we want and not in what he's saying. Yeah. Holy Ghost saying, give me Saul and Barnabas. The rest of y'all, I ain't saying y'all not, not all that. I'm just saying, here's the two I need. But everybody had to be in agreement. Why? Because everybody was fasting. Oh, God, I'm preaching better than you responded. See, everybody wanted to fast and pray. Somebody would have got salty. Why you ain't calling me? I mean, I'm from Nigeria. I'm from the motherland. You should call me. Don't call it. No. Everybody was in the same spirit. Everybody had the same mind. So everybody heard the same word. You got it? So the voice of God becomes clear. Okay, Lord, should I be doing this? Should I be doing it? And can I tell you this? Thank you, Holy Ghost. You don't always have to be doing something. Sometimes just enjoy the fruits of your blessings. Mm. Before you jump to the next thing. Just be cool. Like if God gave you a new car. And he got, he got you a house. And you got a job. Be good. Don't be on Indeed the second week you at that job. Oh I just feel God. No that's called restlessness. You have a wandering spirit. Stay put. Enjoy that car. But you got that. See a new car only new for a couple of weeks. A couple of days. I don't believe in God for a new niece. And I ain't hating, but I'm just like, you just got that master. <laughs> What's wrong with it? I want to count the new Lord calling to a Lexus for real already. <laughs> Your car paper is 356. Jesus. I mean, come on. Pay this off. How about, let's, all I'm saying is stop thinking you always got to be doing something because you see other people doing something. I'm good. When I see churches being built, I be like, man, praise God. When I see people start new churches, amen. Do you got a pastor? If you ain't got a pastor, I'm just praying for you. You know what I'm saying? Like I be trying to help folks. Because I ain't hate. I just want everybody to win. But here's the thing. When everybody's winning, somebody got to be still. Everybody just can't be moving. Like, just enjoy what God, enjoy your family. You ain't got to go see everybody this year. 
I mean, if y'all cook, you good. You ain't got to show off for nobody. If you cook, eat your ham and your whatever you're going to eat, and just enjoy your life. We think we got to always be moving, and that's God. Sometimes God, I don't get what I'm saying. He may just be saying, enjoy your house. Enjoy that new job. Enjoy the fact that you ain't got five and you can take a three hour lunch. Just enjoy that. <laughs> and then get mad when they talk about where you be. I'm grown. No, you're not. You're lazy because you've been gone for three hours. You try it. That's what you are. You're not grown. You try it. You need to sit at them. The voice of God becomes clear when you fast. Number two. Number two, write this down. Your faith increases. You begin to believe God for spiritual gifts. You begin to study stuff that you were always taught. Your faith increases. Your faith increases because now, you know, even when your body is stricken, when things happen, your faith increases when you fast. See, faith has a plan. Faith is not, see, when Peter stepped out of the boat, because people use this isogenically, but exegetically, when he stepped out of the boat, he was stepping out on a word that everybody else heard. He, didn't, he wasn't the only one that heard it. What do you mean? They were all in the boat. They saw a ghost. Come on, Reverend Dad, help me out. And they screamed. And he said, Lord, if that's you, be it me. You ain't a ghost. So not only did they hear him request it, they also heard the requester say tongue. So faith just can't be you and God. Watch it. God gives me a vision. God gave me a vision for this church. I've shared some of it with you. Watch this now. And then guess what God does? He confirms it. He confirms it because, now, this is what I didn't know. A lot of the vision that I had and the things that I wanted to do, Pastor Harris wanted to do, Pastor Taylor wanted to do, it just lined up with men who had came before me. So I knew I wasn't too far off. Does that, does that make sense? There's confirmation from godly men who have stood in the same office. So my faith has something to lack. I hope I'm making sense. I thought I was talking. Your, your faith increases. Number three, your patience in life will increase. When you fast, you become more patient. Because you know why? You can't eat till it's over. So you're teaching yourself how to be patient. People ask me all the time, how do you handle it as a pastor? I said, number one, I'm called to do it, so it's not me. Like, I just do, I, I wake up like this because I'm called to do. It's not a strain to me. It would be a strain for me to work in a, a different place that I'm not called to. It's easy to do what I do because I know I'm anointed to do this. So I operate in it so, so effortlessly because it's him. Right? So my patience for people and things, it's okay. If I told you some of the things that I faced, you would be like, nah, I better knock somebody out. And sometimes I do. But because I have to fast in those moments, my patience is increasing. You know, can I tell you all this? That when people see you being blessed, they they feel some type of way. They feel some type of way. So I have to be patient with that. I'm teaching my children this as well. Why? Because when you fast, your patience in life. I didn't say I don't care about things. I, I'm very passionate about a lot of stuff. But certain things don't move me because I got to wait on God. I got to wait on God. Like, I, I can't move ahead of him because when I do, I always mess up. But if I wait on him, waiting is not me just trolling my fingers. Waiting on me looks like, robo shot, ta -da -da. God, I give you glory. God, you. that's me waiting. While I'm waiting, I'm worshiping. I'm not just looking around gossiping, getting up folks' business, but while I'm waiting on God, I am putting my focus on him. So we think waiting is getting folks' business, keeping up mess, talking about other folks that want God to bless yours. Or, or watch this, we become silent and cynical. You know, you can be silent and cynical at the same time. You can be judging and having evil thoughts while you being silent and thinking because you're quiet, nobody knows. But guess what? The Bible tells me let the Redeemer of the Lord say something. So whether you're talking a lot or whether you're silent, guess what? God, you still got to submit to God in everything you do. Number, number four, number four, fasting is a, it's a healthier lifestyle naturally. When you eat the right things, it's, it's, it's naturally healthy. Uh, I told you this, that my, my, my sister-in-law who's a uh, trained licensed medical doctor 
She said a lot of diseases can be reversed by what you eat. The Daniel fast is one of them. All right, so number one, the voice of God becomes clear. Number two, your faith increases. Number three, your patience in life will increase. Number four, it's a healthier lifestyle. Where would our church be if everybody was fasting? How many never? I ain't even talk about um, the dancing and shouting and all that. I ain't even getting caught up in all that stuff. I'm talking about the miracles. I'm talking about the folk that'll be saved. I'm talking about how how much would East St. Louis be changed? Everybody was in line with God's will. Last one. When you fast, spiritual gifts and spiritual authority become more evident. You have more spiritual authority when you're fasting. You begin to cast out demons that you didn't know you was casting out. And sometimes you cast a demon out of yourself. I know everybody else got one, but sometimes you may be going to the mirror saying, the name of Jesus, come out. That bad attitude, yeah. All of that. Offense all the time. Bad, I mean, just uh, always mad. Come on, go to the mirror sometimes and say, Jesus, deliver me from me. I know, I know y'all didn't like that, but it's okay. I practice that one. And I've been walking over getting no amens on that one. Because everybody else has a demon, but nobody wants to say themselves that he could get delivered. Hallelujah. All right. Look at Acts 19, and I'm out of your way. Oh, man, I'm already on the time. Why did nobody say that? All right. Acts 19. Look at verse 11. All right. I got to read through this. Uh, I want to give you this. Read it when you get home, but here's what I want to share with you. Look at verse number, um, verse 17. Go to verse 17. Acts 19, verse 11 through 20. All right? Uh, I'm going to read verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. J. Walker, verse 17. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks, and also dwelling in uh, Ephesus. And fear fell on all of them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Look at verse 19. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they continued and they counted the price of them and found a thousand pieces of silver. What happened was, Paul comes and there's this fake exorcist. His name is, they're the sons of Sceva. So they're trying to cast out the devils. And these devils jump on them. But Paul shows them these great miracles, right? Because remember, chapter 19 is birthed out of chapter 13. Y'all remember that? They were fasting and praying. Okay, so as a result of their fasting and praying, here's Paul in chapter 19 doing these great miracles. All right, so as a result of this, these people who were practicing witchcraft and practicing Ouija boards and all this foolishness, they brought their books out and they burned them. And they counted the price of them. The Bible says, I didn't say it, the Bible says there were a thousand pieces of silver. Here's the question. Why is this spiritual authority like this important? Pastor, until you came here, I, this stuff wasn't important. Like, this didn't really matter to me. Like, who cares what people do lottery? Who cares if people are doing Ouija board? Like, we never heard this stuff until you got it. So it's almost like you're making an issue when something was not an issue. And what I'm telling you, there are spiritual battles that are happening behind the scenes that you're not aware of. That's it. And why this is important, write this down. The reason this story is important is Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 Jesus says in verse 18 and 19, Luke chapter 4, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? For he hath anointed me to do a couple of different things. Preach the gospel to the poor. Let me, let me read it to you real quick. It's just, just for, I want to get this last part of it. Here it is. Look for it. He says, uh, the preach the gospel to the poor. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to see at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay, Jesus says this in Luke 4. Can I tell you what he was doing right before he quoted this scripture? Yes. He was fasting. He had just came out of a 40-day, 40 40-night 40 fast. He goes right into the temple. He says, give me the Bible. The only Bible they had was the prophets. He, go, he finds in the book of Isaiah this scripture and he reads it. He says to them, today is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now, how does he have so much spiritual authority? Because he had been with God. Can I tell you, men, uh, if you really want to bless 
your home, leave this fast out. Women, if you really want to support your man, watch this, follow in this fast. Children, if you really want to be blessed, get in along with this fast. Why? Because God will do great things for us, and this type of spiritual authority that we need to get things done will happen. Come on here. Are y'all with me? Yeah. You've been at work all day. Let me give you this last one. Jesus commands us to fast. He commands us to fast. Why? Why does he command us to fast? Because he knows the benefits of it. There's so many benefits in it. Like there's so many things that you can get out of it just from some temporary pain. Can I tell you that the first two weeks of working out are the hardest few weeks? You know why? Because your body's back getting used to it. But once you get past the two weeks, here it is. Write it down. It becomes a lifestyle. And once it's a lifestyle, you'll never change it. Father, tonight I bless you. I give you glory. Thank you for these, your children, listening, God, this long. And I thank you for giving them a word that they can utilize. Thank you for every command to fast. Thank you for the grace to fast. Thank you for the benefits of fasting. Father, we declare, everybody says to me, say, I will complete the 21-day fast. So, Father, we thank you for the grace. We know that life and death lie in our tongue. And we've declared it, so it's got to happen. For we are in covenant with you. So bless these your children. Magnify your name. Be glorified. In Jesus' name, we say, we say amen. In the hands of the minister. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Now is the time. Now is the time. I want to make three invitations to you. The first one is salvation. Salvation, something that we all need. You need salvation in order to enter heaven. You must make a confession of faith in yourself. Make Jesus Lord over your life. Don't walk out of this door. Don't end this broadcast the same way that you came. Allow him to change you. The second one is rededication. Maybe you're in a backslidden state. And you want to rededicate your life to Christ. We want you to come. You heard, you heard Pastor say it earlier. He's married to the backslider. You know what that means? That that is a covenant that's not broken. Regardless of what you do, he's right there. Arms open wide saying, I'm still here. Come to me. The third one I want to make to you is church membership. Maybe you're saying, and you need a good Bible-based church home. We want you to come. Be a lone ranger. You know, I am the church. No, no, no. You need, you need to get under some covenant. You need to get under some leadership. Somebody that's going to lead you through God's word, not just you doing it on your own. That's a, that's a trick of the enemy. Let me tell you, that's an easy way to get you right back out there doing what you was doing before. Don't believe that. Get under some covenant. Come on down. Don't listen. I want to make another invitation for those of us in the congregation. Maybe you're struggling or dealing with something. Maybe it, something from when you were a kid or maybe something happened. Maybe you're struggling with something around the crazy holiday season and you need prayer. You need somebody to pray with you. We want you to come and stand on this red line for you. Do not be ashamed. Please don't be ashamed. Get up. Come down here. We will pray with you. If one can send a thousand, imagine what a room of us can do. Don't suffer in silence. That's a trick of the enemy. He wants you to suffer. Don't suffer in silence. We want you to come down. If you're online, type into the chat box. Somebody will get back with you. I promise you. We'll give you a few, few more seconds. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word, Lord God, that went over us today, Father. We ask, Lord God, that you would allow it to grab hold of our hearts, Lord God, and allow us to apply it to our everyday lives, Lord God, not just, Lord God, around people, but also when there's nobody around, just you and us, Lord God, we want to be able to hold this word and hold on to it, Lord God. We want to 
walk in light and not in darkness, Lord God. Father, we ask that you would just bless each and every person under the sound of my voice, Lord God. Give them a fresh revelation, Lord God, a fresh renewal of heart, mind, body, and soul, Lord God. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Say amen. Now, seed time. Seed time. Seed time. I want to pray over your seeds. Get your seeds out. There's three ways we can give. First way, I'm, I gotta shoot my shot. Come down to the church. 5803 Belmont Avenue, but you can also mail it in. <laughs> or you can go online to use our church website at www.bethel.com. You can also give you, um, you can also mail it in at 5803 Belmont Avenue, East St. Louis, Illinois. Or one of my personal favorites, when I can't stop by the cash app, I mean, you know, by the ATM is cash app. Dollar sign. New Bethel MV Church. Make sure you see our logo. There's a lot of new Bethels around the city. Let's pray over our seats. If we can all just hold your phone for your seats. I have to hold them up just hold them up a little bit. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for these seats, Lord God, and we thank you for ground to sow me, Lord God. Therefore, Lord God, we come into agreement with Genesis 8, 22, Father. We also come into agreement, Lord God, with 1 Chronicles 14, Lord God. We come into agreement with Malachi 310, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for this ground that you have given us, Lord. And it being the cold season, we're going to sow our seeds, Lord God. And there are from now on, here on, in your hands, Lord God. We ask that you would bless everyone under the sound of my voice. I'm 30, 60, and 100 for a bless those that have a gift, but don't stop there, Lord God. We ask that you would bless those that have a desire, but have it not. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Saints are coming. We give God praise for all you tonight. Sunday. Amen. We'll be back. Make sure you get a dress down again, please. I hope you're enjoying this. Amen. We are close. Amen. To be complete. Just give you kind of a quick update for those for the carpet. Uh, the uh, floor carpet and pulpit carpet are two different styles in terms of that one has to be rolled and the others are like um, squares, if you will. So uh, that'll be here any day now. We'll keep you updated. And for the time being, we'll be worshiping here. Now, it looks as if we'll be doing New Year's Eve in here as well. Amen. But that's okay. Uh, we're asking you to stay committed to uh, the vision of what we have going on. I'll be sharing some of the vision with you on 2022 on New Year's Eve. And of course, that first Sunday, we'll be declaring the word of God. But uh, we can only do one thing at a time. So this Sunday, 10 a.m., don't forget about 9 a.m. Sunday school. You'll be back in your normal classes, and then we'll be back in here, amen, for 10 a.m. Thank you so much for your faithfulness tonight coming out, hearing the word. Did you learn anything tonight that bless you? Glory to God. Let's get prepared, man. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm expecting some great things for everybody in this church. Amen. As it relates to this glory and fasting. And again, even if nothing's happening, like per se, like B, the fact that he's waking us up every morning, the fact that he got given us jobs and family and we got eyes to see and stuff like that, don't take that stuff for granted. Amen. And so, we thank God for that. I don't think we have anything coming up. I know we have some birthdays that people have been celebrating. So keep the saints of God in prayer. As our kids are out on break, lift them up in prayer. Amen. We pray for those who have to stay at home by themselves. That no foolishness happened. That people are safe. Let's keep our children lifted up. Amen. 
And let's keep the body of Christ lifted up. Any first time visitors online, Pastor Norris greets you. I can't wait to see you. You can come on campus. We are open. Amen. We'll leave the light on for you. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet, people of God. Amen. And we give God all the praise and all the glory for what he is doing. Hey, have a Merry Christmas. We do believe in Christmas. Amen. Christmas, he is the, he is the Lord God Almighty. And so we want you to join us up on Saturday. Remember, as I said to you today, what is the reason for the season? It's not about gifts. It's about the Lord Jesus. Amen. And although we can argue from a hermeneutical standpoint that he wasn't born on December 25th, I'm not going to get involved with that. We know what this time of the year is about. It is about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's not about a tree. It's about the gift that God gave us. Here's what the Lord tells us all the time. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron unto his son, saying on this wise, You shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Remember to keep Sister Nikki and Sister Yolanda as they are recovering in your prayers. Amen. They're doing well. I heard from both of them. All is well. Keep the saints of God in your prayer. Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule in the body, and be with you hence now and forevermore. I speak a blessing over your life. It cannot be reversed, for it's a blessing that comes only from the Lord. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray until we meet again. Have a great week, New Bethel. God bless you. Thank you for coming.